Hello, I'm Sula, backyard astronomer, and in this video I'm going to be testing out the Celestron StarSense Explorer LT114AZ telescope. Yes, it's the same telescope that I said bad things about in the last Celestron telescope I reviewed, but I found this one on sale for $169, so I got it so I could test it out myself. This telescope is a reflector telescope. Curiously, the website Celestron says it has a lens. It does not have a lens. It has a 114 millimeter mirror in it. <laughs> All reflectors have mirrors. And 114 is four and a half inches. But it says that it has a focal length of a thousand millimeters. But you can see that it's not a thousand millimeters. It's probably about 600 millimeters. But they make it a thousand by putting a Barlow corrector inside of the focuser that you can see if you look down into it to make it a thousand millimeters and that's why I thought the optics would not be as good as the DX model but I'm going to test it out myself the moon just came up I'm going to look at the moon and then tonight it's going to be clear for a little while and I'll look at some objects in the night sky with this telescope and then I'll tell you what I think about it it's very easy to put together. You just open the tripod legs, adjust them if you need to to make it higher or lower. And then you put the accessory tray here and you just spin it. And then <clears throat> you turn the altitude knob <clears throat> to make sure it's pointed that way. Then you take the telescope and then you slide the altitude adjustment into that hole and then make sure the telescope goes into those cradles and then you put a locking screw on the altitude knob that's how you adjust the altitude and then came with two knobs to secure the telescope onto the yoke. They go right here and on the other side. And the telescope came with a red dot finder that goes on these two silver screws on the top. So be sure to pull this piece of plastic out that was between the battery before starting and then put the red dot finder on these where these silver screws are on the top. And then we're gonna line up the red dot finder. And that's it for the setup, except this thing on top is where you put the star sense that comes in this bag. And then you have to put your own phone into the star sense. It's just a cradle to hold your phone. And then you have to download the app to your phone and enter the code that came with the telescope in order to make it work. But this is the StarSense cradle and it just goes in right here. Now we're all set, let's put the finder scope on and line up the finder scope with the telescope. Okay, the telescope came with a 25 millimeter eyepiece and a 10 millimeter eyepiece and a two-time Barlow and a red dot finder and I lined up the red dot finder with the 25 millimeter eyepiece first and then I honed it in even more with the 10 millimeter. I haven't tried this Barlow yet but I'm very suspicious because it already has a Barlow in it but we'll see. So the moon is up so let's have a look at it. And the red dot finder is on the opposite side from the eyepiece, but it's still accessible. It doesn't have any slow motion controls, just this altitude adjustment knob that's on the other side. Okay, very nice. When the moon, the moon's at first quarter today, I think. When you look at the moon during the day, it doesn't have a lot of contrast, so it doesn't blind you. But sometimes it can be hard to find, but not today, because it's a quarter and you can easily see it. Okay, very nice. Okay, I 
Yeah, all right. I can focus it with the Barlow and the 25 millimeter. Okay, that looks... That looks pretty good. Here's some video of the moon through this telescope. But there's the moon through this telescope and my camera. I'm sorry. Did I say that this 25 millimeter makes it 25 times magnification? I misspoke. It's a thousand millimeter focal length divided by 25 would be 40 times with this one and 100 times with the 10 millimeter. With the Barlow, it just doubles. So the 25 millimeter with the Barlow would be 80 times, which I looked at the moon with and it looked pretty good, actually. Um, like I said, there's not a lot of contrast when you look at the moon during the day, but I can see the craters, and oh, it looks pretty good. When I put the 10 millimeter with the Barlow at 200 times, it is a very narrow <laughs> field of view you get, and it's hard to make this thing stay put, but it looks pretty good. You can get in on some craters at 200 times. So you can bring the Barlow to focus, but very difficult to hone in because it has a very narrow field of view. But it looks pretty good. To use the StarSense is very easy. Download the app to your phone before you leave home while you have internet in case you don't have it where you go to Stargaze. And then... Take the cover off of the mirror and then slide your phone into this cradle. And then there's a knob right here that you turn to line up your phone's camera with the mirror. And then when that's lined up, you're going to point to something bright and get it in the telescope because you need to line up the phone just like you would line up a finder scope. So open the app. And then Venus is up, so I'll use Venus. It says, need alignment. Say yes, and then get Venus or whatever your bright object is into your telescope. <coughs> Venus look quite nice, by the way. And then when it's in the phone, you get it in the middle of these crosshairs by moving the screen around till Venus or whatever your object is is right in the crosshairs and then you click done and then you point it towards an area of the sky with stars and then it'll turn green when it's ready and when it's ready you hit this star sense button or the search button at the bottom right hand corner and then you can pick out an object to go to. So we could go to M1, the Crab Nebula, and it'll tell you about it. Or you could just say done. You can just follow the arrows until it turns green. And it should be in the eyepiece if you lined it up properly. That's it. It's very easy to use. Very accurate too. Nice, just looking at M42, the Great Orion Nebula, and it looks quite nice. Venus looked nice, and I'm going to look at a few more objects, but I think the optics are pretty nice. Now I'm looking at Mars. I looked with the 10 millimeter, and it looked okay. And then I put the 10 millimeter on this Barlow and it did not look okay. In fact, I think that may exceed the useful magnification of this telescope. I have to look it up. But it looked pretty good with the 10 millimeter. Now I'm looking at NGC 869, one of the clusters in the famous double cluster. And it looks pretty good, but it's hard to get this thing to stay on it. Even after I turn these knobs and tighten them but it looks pretty good 
Now I'm looking at NGC 2264, the Christmas tree cluster. <laughs> Looks just like a Christmas tree. I don't have any chance at the Code Nebula with this telescope, but the Christmas tree cluster looks really good. Very nice. I think I've looked at enough to formulate an opinion, so I'll come back in the morning and give you my thoughts about this telescope. I finished my testing of the Celestron StarSense Explorer LT114AZ telescope, and I'm ready to give my final thoughts about it. In an earlier episode, I said I didn't recommend this telescope because I thought the optics would be inferior because of the design, which some people call a Bird Jones. But what it means is this telescope has a primary mirror of 114 millimeters or four and a half inches. And if you measure the tube, it's about 483 millimeters. So that should give it a focal ratio of four. But the tube says that the focal length is a thousand, making it F9. And the way Celestron does that is that they put a corrector lens or Barlow in the focuser. I don't know what because you won't find anything about it on their website or the paperwork that comes with the telescope. And that is how they achieve a thousand millimeter focal length. And I thought that that would diminish the contrast and make the optics inferior. But actually after testing it, I had very pleasing looks at Venus. I saw the bands on Jupiter, the Galilean moons. I saw a little bit of feature on Mars. The Great Orion Nebula and the Crab Nebula looked fine and some star clusters and everything I looked at was very pleasing and nice for a $200 telescope. But the way a manufacturer can offer a telescope at that price point is they cut corners in other places. You get two cheap Kellner eyepieces, but they were okay. The focuser is plastic and it's going to wear out over time. The mount is just barely adequate. It's a yoke mount and the telescope does not come with a dovetail bar so you can't put it on anything else. It doesn't come with two slow motion controls which is unfortunate, just this altitude adjustment rod. But I was able to tighten it down and hone in on the objects. So it's a little wobbly but not too bad. The red dot finder is way over here so you have to lean over the star sense to see through it. And you do need the red dot finder because you can't use the star sense during the day and you need to line up something, the telescope and the star sense and you use the red dot finder to do that. And lastly, there is nothing in the paperwork about collimation. This telescope is a reflector and all reflectors have to be collimated. That's what these screws are for on the back of the mirror. It just means you line up the primary mirror with the secondary mirror to get good focus. And there's nothing in the paperwork about collimation. And in fact, I don't even know how you collimate a telescope with this design. I read somewhere that you have to take this Barlow lens out of the focuser. I don't know. Fortunately, it came very well collimated from the factory. The StarSense worked great. It's very easy to use, it's very accurate, and it's a wonderful technology to allow you to locate objects in the night sky. So this telescope for $200, it's okay. That's all I have to say about this telescope. <laughs> That's it for now. I'll see y'all soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.